Okay, so we're in the category now of a lot of people that, you know, they want to hear from God, but they're having a hard time doing so. Maybe they don't understand. And, you know, I really want to try and help you with this because you can hear from God. You know, sometimes it, it just takes, you know, quieting your mind down. And then the first thought that pops in your mind, it's like you're hearing your voice in your mind. So ask God a question and, you know, wait for the first, you know, thing to pop in your mind. Or it, it might take, you know, taking time to hearing it. You know, it, maybe it'll, you know, the whole purpose of that is to deal with your flesh. Because we're impatient people. We live in an impatient society. And when somebody wants something, they want it right now. There is no patience whatsoever. There's no waiting for it. And, you know, patience develops character. You know, and it's, you know, love is patient. You know, and when we are working through patience, we're working through love. So, ask God to help you to calm your mind down, to calm, you know, what you got to do, and get into a quiet place, away from everybody. If you have to go in your car, go to a secluded spot, like a park or something, and ask God a question, then sit and wait. And, you know, sometimes... It takes waiting for a little bit before you will hear something. So just write that down. Now, if you're still having problems, we're going to work on that. You know, I, I'd like to hear your feedback if you're watching this video. You know, maybe we can work together. You know, you shoot me a message. I'll, I'll give you my email and you can write me in. We can work on this together and, you know, try to find some resources to help you. But... If you're one of those people that are having problems hearing from God and, you know, you feel, I mean, you haven't heard him, but, you know, maybe you've watched my videos and whatever I had said sparked that desire in you to want to trust God, that you feel like you have to because, you know, what happens if you lose your job and you're going to be dismayed because that's where your source of dependence lies. So you don't want to be dependent on your job anymore. You want to be dependent on God. You realize your strength comes from God and he can take it from you. So you want to get into that place of trusting him. So you want to hear his instructions. So we're going to work on that. But, you know, you know that you, you know that trusting God is important and it's something that you want to do. So you know that's true because you felt prompted inside you. And I looked up prompt in the, the dictionary, and it says, in parentheses, of an event or fact, cause or bring about, in, you know, in a parentheses again, cause or bring about an action or feeling. So you're, you're, you're being prompted to want to trust God, that you know that you need to do so. So... It just, you know, it takes, once you're hearing from God, you know, maybe a word will come into your mind, maybe a sentence. So you write that down, and you wait, and you ask God more questions. And after you ask a question, you wait longer. And so, if you get a few words at a time, you want to really work on hearing even more. You want to work on writing sentences down. You know, and that's where I got to. I got to the place where I'm just like, it's like I'm sitting at a chalkboard and a teacher is writing down everything that we as a student need to take down. So you're taking dictation off a blackboard. That's what, you know, I worked into doing. You know, I heard a few words at a time. I was afraid at first that I was hearing myself. You know, uh, you know how do I hear from God? I mean... What do I do, you know? And I had to go to a prophetic class in order to learn it. And so, you know, God helped me through that time to where I, you know, I, I heard a word down. And, you know, I said, Lord, if it's really of you, I ask that you would confirm it. So, you know, watch my other videos as well so that you can differentiate the three voices that you would hear. And, 
I get into, you know, speaking on that in those videos. So I just want to let you know and encourage you that you can hear from God. You are his child. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So let's say that even though you haven't heard from God, but you know you need to trust him, you know, I would say that get first get stronger in hearing him. Get to that place to where, you know, you're writing down thoughts that are coming in. And I would say to differentiate if those thoughts are of God, they speak of comfort, they speak of things to come. Like when I first started my rest, God said that people were going to come against me and criticize me. And sure enough, that happened. So that proved that I did hear from God. So, you know, you want to get into the place to where you're asking him, Lord, confirm if what I'm hearing is from you. So get into that place. So I would not say, I mean, I, it's very important that we hear, get God's instructions that we are hearing him. So I'm not going to tell you to go and quit your job because that's between you and God, what God would want you to do. I would say first, get into that place to where you're hearing him. Once you hear him, you know that it's his voice that's guiding you. So I would say keep your job until you get definite instructions from him. But you could still trust him while you have a job. So we're going to get to that. Now, there are some people that can hear from God and at a drop of a hat quit their job and depend fully on him. But there's also some people that won't do that because of fear. And so not everyone can just trust God quickly. It's gradual. That's what God did with me. It was a gradual trust. I didn't just, you know, I, of course I didn't have a job at the time when I was trusting him. So it was easy for me to get into that place of trust. But there was still dealing with my flesh in which, you know, for so long I, I was taking care of matters myself. Now, when you're, when you start hearing from God, your goal is to ask him for specifics. What do I mean? Well, if you have ever watched Finger of God by, I think it's Darren, I forgot what his name was, but he, he did those various videos, Finger of God, Finger of God 2, um, what is the other ones, um, let me think of them. Well, I can't think of the name. But search up on Google, Finger of God, and you'll get, you know, the director's name who created them. So, you know, in the video, he, he explores different aspects of God that, you know, a lot of people in church, you know, never even considered. And if they ever consider it, then, you know, they're thinking it's, you know, crazy talk. For example, you know, speaking in tongues, there's a lot of Christians that think, you know, it's all about cessationalism where, you know, you stop hearing from God, you know, after the first apostle died. So God doesn't speak anymore according to their thinking. So this, this director, who's a Christian, explores different areas that a lot of Christians haven't considered. You know, God's presence. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, another video of what of his was furious love and a, a very good video you got to check that out but in the finger of god video there was a bunch of christians who were hearing god together and the the purpose of doing that is that they were going out and witnessing so they asked god for specifics about who what person's wearing what you know the person that they were going to talk to god what are they wearing God would give them, you know, wor some words about what that person was wearing or whatever. So they, they would leave and they would go out and look for that person and they would minister to them. So, you know, God works through that. So, you know, when you're hearing God, ask him for specifics about, you know, what he wants you to do. Lord, what is your instructions for me to quit my job? Is there, you know, certain steps you want me to take? 
Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to do that? Lord, do you want me just to quit and for me to fully depend on you? Or God, do you just want me to keep my job, but you want me to depend on you in this way? So we're going to get into those different specifics that you can ask God. So, now, like I said, you know, it was gradual for me to trust him. You know, I didn't trust him at first because for so long I trusted myself. But when I asked for, you know, bread and milk, you know, we put it up before God and we stood on the scripture that said, if you believe, you'll receive whatever you ask for in prayer. So, Lord, we need bread and milk. I'm standing on this in faith. You know, you provided this other thing before. You know, I have no doubt because you are not a liar. Your word says that you are not a liar. You said in Matthew chapter 6 that you take care of the birds of the air. We're, in more, we're more important than they. So, Lord, we just ask for your provision. So, you know, God worked that whole situation out. And one day... My mother received a knock on the door, and a person that was in her building, she said she gave my mother a check because she entered, without my mother's knowledge, my mother's craft into an art fair, and my mother won a prize, and believe it or not, the amount that she got was enough to get bread and milk. So God took care of that, you know, need. So, you know, with... Him coming through, it my trust in God starting to become more and more stronger. And so when I started trusting God more, I was trusting myself less. I started to realize that what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 was accurate. It was true. God heard me. God took care of my needs. So he's going to do the same thing for you. You don't need to fear. So, you know, there's a lot of people you know, that can just quit their job and, you know, rely totally on God. And, you know, I, I recall Smith Wigglesworth, when he started, you know, he stood in faith for healing. I believe he had diabetes and the doctor wanted him to take his medication. And so he refused. He stood in faith for healing and God healed him. But, you know, there's a lot of people that would fear doing that. So, it, I once again, I believe the safe route is to hear God for ourselves, to get our instructions from Him, and not to go on our own. Why is that? Well, that's, I don't believe that once we surrender our will to God, that we make decisions on our own anymore. I believe that we need to get to the place to where we're asking God, Lord, what do you want me to do about this? What do you want me to do about that? Which way do you want me to go? Because God sees the future. He knows around the corner. He can see around the corner corner if there's a gaping hole in the ground. Well, you don't see it, so you're going to fall into it. And, you know, if you hear from God, he can warn you about things that are going to happen. And not only that, but he can encourage you about what you need to do. So it takes that with, you know, trusting God. He can give you specifics. About what, but he, about what he wants you to do. So, you may ask, can I trust God while I have a job? And once again, I, I say that you've got to wait on God to get his answer because I'm not going to give you instructions because I am human, I'm fallible, and if I give you instructions, then that may not be the actions God wants you to take. So I don't want to be blamed on giving you misinformation. God is your Lord, so let God guide you. So I would say, wait on God for his answer. If he leads you in keeping it, then he'll give you specifics about how to trust him. Now, the things that you own, you know, your house or your apartment, your job, you know, your personal belongings, your furniture, everything in your house. You want to get into that place to where, you know, 
you give it to God, that it's no longer yours. You're living as if you're in a hotel. Why is that? Well, what happens if a thief comes in and takes it? Well, you're going to be upset and dismayed because you're like, hey, this is the stuff that, you know, I have and some of it I depend on. Well, why depend on something that can be, you know, destroyed or, you know, can be stolen? And this goes along the lines of what Jesus said in Matthew chapters 5 to 7. And what I want to do is lead you into his teachings again. You know, to get into that place to where your mindsets are lining up with what God's word says. So that you're not going to be in that faulty place. Because if your dependence is on your job and on your bank account, what if it's taken away? You're going to be upset. And you're going to be upset because you have built your house on the sand on something that is unsure rather than having it on the rock. So you need to, you know, all these mindsets, you know, it takes spending time with God and asking him, Lord, what mindsets in this world do I have? And so, it, you know, this is a gradual thing. You know, hearing God, you know, one or two words, asking him, you know, for more. Lord, I want sentences. What do you want me to do? Writing down those sentences and then getting into specifics. And he will guide you. I mean, there are going to be some some of you that, you know, God, you may ask God a question and automatically you're going to hear in your mind, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Da, 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 da. And so you're going to be like trying to keep up with, you know, what you're hearing. So, you know, it's not a disheartening thing for those that can hear. You know, my own mother had, had you know, still has a hard time hearing God's voice. I mean, sometimes she'll get you know, a word here, a word there, and God confirms that it's true. So don't feel bad. Don't feel like you're less than a child of God because that's not true. You can hear his voice. But it takes, you know, how much effort are you putting in into hearing him? Are you willing to wait for a while before you would actually hear something? And, you know, that's the problem with a lot of Christians is that, they, like the disciples, can't, you know, stay up and pray with Jesus. You know, they you know, they let their flesh dictate over their spirit. So you, you want to always have your spirit to lead you. You always want to wait on God and see what he says. So I'm going to give you, and, you know, I just want to close this section with this, is about, you know, changing mindsets. When you can get to that place of hearing God, you know, fully, then ask him to, to show you what mindsets you are carrying that's of this world that's holding you back. For example, God helps those who help themselves. Well, I reasoned out in many videos that that thinking isn't true. So you also, with God, need to find out what thinking that you're holding on to that is not biblical. If anything, it's worldly. So if it's worldly, do away with it, because that's going to be another weight off your shoulders. So you want to change your mindsets that are not of God, so that you can be free in trusting Him. So this last section is, you know, the, these are possibilities. You know, these are, you know, different scenarios that God may have for you. And I'm not going to tell you, you know what you should do, because that's between you and God. So, in this section, I'm going to lay, you know, just state a few of these possibilities that God could do. Maybe God wants you to quit your job and rely fully on Him. Maybe God wants you to keep it and gradually trust. And that's different for everyone. You know, maybe, you know, God tells that person, hey, I want you to quit your job and rely totally on me. You know, or God may say, I want you to keep it, you know, because these are certain areas I want you to give to me. Maybe you have a problem with tithing. So God wants you to, you know, of course, pay your bills and whatever you have left, give to the church and then wait on him to come through for any kind of needs that you may have. If it's a bill that comes up, you're walking in faith for that bill to be paid. 
Maybe God wants you to give all your spending money to the poor and rely on him to take care of your needs. You know, it could be that with food. And lastly, maybe God would have you give all your money to the poor and rely on him for bills and money for food or, you know, for God to provide food for you. And, you know, I once heard of, you know, this prophet of God who didn't have any money to get food or anything, but he asked God specifically about what he wanted. So him and his sons were at a table and they prayed for, you know, God's provision for cereal. So they asked God for a specific cereal that they wanted. And as soon as they said, amen, there was a knock on their door and God provided that exact cereal. So, you know, really take in Matthew chapter six, verses 25 to 33, really reread that. And basically you just want to get rid of any mindsets that are holding you back from really following God. And you want to get to that place to where you're really hearing him. So like I said in my other videos that we're in this together, you know, we're all at different stages in our walks with God. But what matters is that we're walking toward God and we're not walking according to the world's desire or to the world's desire. So I'm going to end the video here. Thank you for taking the time to watch.